all right so hey there this is kushal and uh, welcome to my channel in today's video we'll talk about uh, gradient descent not exactly gradient descent but to understand gradient descent we need to learn about calculus so i'll be uh, I'll, i'll be teaching you differential calculus and uh, it will be containing each and everything to to basically implement uh, differential calculus whenever you have a machine learning problem because uh, when we are not from the mathematics background it's uh, it's actually not not easy to understand calculus from scratch so let's start with the word calculus right now what is calculus it is a branch of mathematics it is a branch of mathematics all right now mathematics is a lot of branches such as uh, functions and arithmetic algebra so similarly calculus is also one of the branches and uh, in this branch of mathematics we learn uh, we learn a lot of things first thing is how to find the rate of change rate of change what is rate of change let's say you have a function so what is a function in mathematics function is a equation is an equation let's say y equals to mx plus c now this function can take three values one is x one is m and one is c so m and c can be kept constants because uh, these are just constants like no no change in value but this x is a variable so value of x will be changing value of y will be changing so with the change in value of x value of y will be changing right now what we want to find out you want to find out at what rate the value of x is changing let's say let's say you have uh, uh let's say you have uh, you, you have a lot of values of x which are coming out from uh, from some stream and you are inputting it and getting y so you want to see that that at like with what rate with what speed value of y is changing with respect to what value of x is inputted that's what is called rate of change and we try to find out this thing we basically we are able to find out this thing using calculus and uh, calculus is of two types first is uh, differential calculus and uh, second is integral calculus so in machine learning or uh, ai or everything differential calculus is used not integral calculus so we'll be focusing on this thing and our focus is to learn uh, gradient descent because that's the basic uh, minimization or you can say optimization algorithm which is used uh, to minimize the error so that is very important that's what we're going to learn today so this is rate of change and we can we can basically try to find out rate of change using calculus using differential calculus integral is for different case don't just think about it it's, it's not it's not useful for now it's not useful okay also in this branch we learn how to minimize or how to find the minimum value of a function or how to find the maximum value of a function because a function can have a lot of values let's say a lot of values of x a lot of values of y you need to find the minimum value or the maximum value of y and you can do this using calculus we have uh, have we have some methods first order or second order using which we can uh, minimize or maximize the functions although we won't be using this in machine learning because it's not uh, programmed like programming friendly approaches we'll be using gradient descent that's what we're going to learn today at the end of this video all right so let's continue and uh, let's start with uh, let's start with the differential calculus from the next page just a second yeah yeah so differential calculus S right now whenever we do an operation we we have a sign let's say for addition we have this for subtraction we have this for uh, multiplication we have this for dividing we have this similarly differential calculus or else we can call it uh, differentiation or a derivative which is actually a process process inside different calculus uh, differential calculus in order to in order to find out the rate of change right now uh, rate of change will be always calculated on a function because we want to find rate of change of a function so let's say we have a function y equals to 
mx plus c and if I want to find out the rate of change of y I'll be writing d dy by dx that's how I'll write it because this is the y this is variable of which the rate of change I'm finding with respect to x that means like how much x is changing that is affecting y that's what rate of change is rate of change of y like the speed of change of y or basically the effect uh, like effect happening on y due to x all right so th whenever we'll be finding a rate of change i'll be writing like this let's say we let's say we have a equation z equals to 4x plus 3 so i'll be writing dz by dx all right always this derivative will be calculated with respect to some variable right now wh why with respect to some variable because this variable is the depend uh, independent variable because any value of x you input that will give you a new value of z so z is dependent on x so z is a dependent variable and x is independent variable now we want to find out the rate of change so we'll be like finding it out with respect to some dependent variable because this is only affecting the value of z the change in value of z is due to this uh, value only, uh, this variable only all right so that is what uh, differential uh, calculus a basic you know basic introduction to differential calculus is now we want to move forward and we want to see how exactly we can uh, find out this so to find out differential calculus we have uh, a bit of rules i'm not going to prove it i'll prove it separately in some videos but right now i'll just uh, tell you the rules so the very first rule is let's say you have a function y equals to a where a is a constant right you want to find dy by dx and uh, there is no variable x in this equation that means you're finding the rate of change of y or basically the change of y change in y with respect to x but there is no x so there is no change of y with respect to x so change is zero so whenever you'll be try like whenever you'll try to find a derivative of a constant that means by writing dy by dx i'm writing da by dx because value of y is a right so da by dx is zero because a is a constant and there is no change in constant or basically there is no change in y due to that constant because constant is always constant the second property is uh, y equals to ax all right now whenever you'll be having one variable with one uh, multiplied constant what you'll be doing you'll, you'll write find let's say dy by dx and you'll write d a x by dx putting the value of y here now what you'll do you'll just extract this constant out because you don't you don't want uh, to to do derivative with this you just want to see how much effect uh, your x is laying down in you know in order to change y so you'll be writing a uh, just a second here a dx by dx and uh, dx by dx is one i'll be i'll be i'll I'll be letting you know why this is one but this is what you have to do when you have one uh, constant with some variable you have to take the constant out and do the derivative uh, with respect to that variable and uh, of that variable so that is a dx by dx and one all right so the next uh, next property is basically it's a, it's a property i should have I told you before all this so that is the distributive property distri uh, i don't know what's the issue with my pen tablet but it's not working fine today distributive property now what do we do in this distributive property let's say we have uh, uh, we have a function y equals to a plus b where a and b are two terms don't just term it as constant or something so we'll try to find dy by dx and to find this we'll have to write d 
a plus b by dx and to like now 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 we, now we are with a uh, strange situation jahan pe hame nahi pata hai kya karna hai so we'll just distribute this whenever we'll be having a sign plus or minus with two terms we'll distribute the derivative let's say we'll be writing da by dx plus db by dx so that is the distributive property whenever you have a function in which you have a sign plus or minus or basically there are two terms you will be distributing the derivative on each of the terms right so that is the distributive property and uh, it is very important you'll be using it a lot you'll, you'll you'll be using this one a lot this one a lot and this one a lot right now uh, let's talk about uh, the next thing which is uh, the next property and after all these properties we'll just use these and like try to find derivatives and I'll, I'll let you know some good things about it so the next property is when you have y equals to x to the power n all right y is equal to x to the power n means let's say you have x square or x cube or something like functions like this or 2x square or like that now whenever you'll be having this you'll be writing let's say you want to find dy by dx and this will be equal to let's just write on the standard very slowly just 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 take this n at the forward like this write x as it is and subtract 1 from m Uh, one 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 from the power so that is nx n minus 1 and how you will be doing it let's say for example you have yeah let's say you have uh, y equals to x square so what you'll be doing you'll be doing you'll be writing 2 at the forward writing x and subtracting 1 from the power so that is 2 minus 1 it becomes 2x to the power 1 it becomes 2x that's how you'll approach it whenever you'll have a power you, you, you just write down all the properties and whenever you'll be you know solving some uh, question you'll be using it and don't worry we 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 are not going to solve some uh, large equations or something we just want to learn this thing in order to find the derivative of our cost function that is the error function you can check out my linear regression video in the i button and in that i've talked about the derivative function and that's what uh, we are uh, we're going to learn today right so that is about the basic properties let's now move forward and try to solve some questions so let's say we have one equation y equals to mx plus c and uh, if i want to find dy by dx and to find this i'll just see see at this first thing so mx is equivalent to ax like similar to this and uh, when y equals to ax dy by dx is a into uh, dx by dx we just take the a, a out and you know do 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 the derivative dx by dx and this makes a into 1 equals to a similarly here we'll be getting m now uh, let's do the derivative of this c because i've just distributed the derivative on both one is on this and one is on this according to the distributive property so actually i'm trying to write d mx by dx plus dc by dx now this d mx by dx gave us m and dc by dx where c is a constant so this thing will become zero so dy by dx is equals to m so that is the derivative or 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 we can call it as slope because derivative gives you slope right why it gives you slope let's say you have a circle and uh, you're trying to find a tangent so basically this ta tangent will give you a slope of the circle because like this is what slope is if you'll if you'll just place a ball here it will it will go down due to the gravity so tan theta that is the trigonometric ratio is also like also gives a slope as well as the derivative del y by dx also gives us a slope so like this can be verified with this function y equals to mx plus c where we have tried to find the derivative and we've got the slope so that's all about the basics of the derivative now we're going to talk about the chain rule and we'll do that in the next video